Pat Brown, league astrologer. There's gonna be some politics buying this one. Maybe she's Chet Simmons' sister or something. Let's see. Yes, ma'am. I'm Bob Sarlat from the Invaders US at Ollie Port. Yes. Uh, are you Pat Brown? Yes, I am. You have a few words of this. Yes, come on. Thank you very much. Does football have to do with astrology? Well, football's energy. And I deal with energy. Planets are uh, energy. We can actually look to the moment of birth, position where the planets are at that moment of birth, and determine what the energy is for that thing that is being born. In football, essentially, what you're doing is you're looking to see if the tide is with you or if it's against you. Right. And you're going to move with it accordingly. And if the tide is with you, you're probably playing for Alabama. Back with a typical player, linebacker Dewey McLean. Tell me, Dewey, you don't believe any of this astrology nonsense, do you? No, oh, Bob, you gotta be for real. We, you we all believe in that. I mean, you just, Pat Brown, hey, she's got one of the best. Without Pat, I would be nothing, because let me tell you about Pat. She has one thing, she has a unique bird. A unique bird. Astrologer Pat Brown joins Sean Carlson and I, and Terry Brill also joins us. Uh, Terry, you're a psychic astrologer. That's very right. briefly, give me what the difference is between an astrologer and a psychic astrologer. Good. It's, it's very simple. What I use is astrology as a focus point, as a database for timing. Mm -hmm. And I feel that astrology, like, you know, using it for farming, using it to grow our crops, and also using it to pick certain cycles out that are going to be more lesson learning times and more difficult. So being a psychic astrologer, I'm a psychic first, astrologer second. I use the astrology as a focus point, like somebody who would take a ring from someone's finger, mm -hmm. put it in their hand, mm -hmm. and get the vibrations or a sense about that other person that may or may not be there. All right, I need your reaction to Sean's test and the results. I don't know a lot about Sean's test. The information I read was kind of vague. It didn't have a whole lot of substance. I don't know who he tested, you know, and I feel there are some very good astrologers. I work for large corporations and I work with other astrologers when I need information for my business. Indeed, we are going to be talking to, uh, to three astrologers today. You've met two of them, one other one in just a moment we're going to be talking to, and none of them are among those who are tested. Sean, I want to give you a chance briefly to defend the people that you did test and then answer a question which is, most astrologers are going to say to you, well, it is not an exact science what we do anyway, and so okay. that the 30% might not be such a, such a bad deal. Well, well there's medicine. Well, the, what we did was we talked to, the, the study was actually conducted, it was begun five years ago. It took it a long time to get through the refereeing process and get into, and get into a national journal, and, an international journal and so on. But the test was done, started about five years ago, and we went at that time to a lot of the local astrologers and we asked them, who in your mind are good astrologers? And one organization kept coming up time and time again as being a very respected organization, not only for its astrological work, but also for its scientific work into astrology. And that was the National Council for Geocosmic Research, NCGR. Now, the man who was at that time the executive secretary of NCGR, and himself is a very respected astrologer in the Bay Area, his name is Tony Joseph, uh, was, he happened to be in the Bay Area, so mm -hmm. we went and, and talked to him and talked to other NCGR astrologers who had had experience in, um, in, who knew a lot about the astrological community and so forth and so on. And, and eventually you times. came up with the cross-section of the 28th. That's right, we came up, he supplied us a li with a list of, they supplied us, the astrologers who we got to counsel with us, supplied us with a list of 90 astrologers who they thought would be a random cross-section, take any group of these astrologers and they would be able to perform at the level predicted. They will all tell you it's not an exact science. There is some room for mistake. Your response? Well, well, certainly. I mean, if it was an exact science, you'd expect them to be right 100% of the time. Right? And they knew that, because the, the question is, can they be right on a statistical basis? Can they, can they use the information, the positions of the planets, to get any information about a person's personality without having the person sitting there? Statistically, your point is they couldn't. And statistically, our point is they could not do anywhere near their prediction. Let's take another comment here from San Francisco. John? Sure. Um, we're throwing this word around science uh, around an awful lot. And uh, we must remember in our day and age, it's through science and technology that we've come, that we enjoy the life that we do. And this which is on the borderline has not entered into any part of it. And, and uh, uh, it was interesting to, when I heard Bob Steiner on, the, on the television. He, of course, is from Bay Area Skeptics. Right. On television the other day, and one of these borderlines, what they call it, what we would call a non-science, some lady called in and stated that somebody had put her under her under his, this fella's spell, had put her under this fella's spell. 
<laughs> and John was, uh, uh, Bob was telling her, listen, you're dealing with the non-science and you're permitting this thing to happen to you. And so the point I'm trying to bring out that these things that border on, uh, that border on science, they're not science, that we in this day and age are tending to get away from them. And anytime anyone with these non-science can bring it in by the scientific method and establish the fact that it is so, then we, we who are uh, skeptical would naturally would accept it. So you're waiting for the astrologers to prove that they indeed have a leg to stand on. That's their obligation. Pat, okay. you first. Go ahead. Sir. All right. First of all, let me say this. That a chart can move in a constructive way or a destructive way. An individual does have choices. I counsel individuals. I do not make decisions for them at all. I simply, basically, from a psychological standpoint, uh, produce the pattern of the, the position of their planets, which is their profile, and basically introduce them to themselves. You don't make decisions for them, but certainly you can't deny that based on what you tell them, that's going, to, they, that's going to determine for them the course of action they're going to take. Actually, no, I think it gives them options. It gives them options. It says simply, all right, say that we have an individual who is um, from a family where there is uh, a psychological or physical separation. The role models were very poor mm -hmm. and very limited. In that situation, the individual needs to know that they have to take a second look whenever they're in a relationship, let's say male, female. There's a number of things that have to be done there. They can take the information and build on it. You're supposed to be essentially guiding them. But I must say this, I have never had anyone leave my home and say that it does not apply. And I feel if you're going to instruct, if you're going to test an astrologer, that you should have them with the individual, sit with them, watch them go through the whole thing, look at the points that they're making. I also have planets that I, can, I uh, compare by calculation, mm -hmm. where every planet is going to be daily, you know, the 11 uh, energies in the universe to the planets in the chart. I calculate it, I give it to the person, I've tested this research data and nothing has missed. Okay, Astrology well, that is... Science. Yeah, we've got James... Calculate how inanimate objects are going to apply and going to move through the forces of life. There's a big difference between that and being able to predict a personality or house, what job someone would be best suited for, or anything else, by looking at the planets. That's a very good point. I mean, that's so a very no. It's a very good point that you made. Innate objects and personalities. Personalities have a choice factor, and choice factor does alter some events. When you are looking at the complete profile of an individual. And when I'm sitting there and saying, I, I, for instance, I had one individual who was very much a skeptic come to my house, and I thought, well, I've got to really lock her in, with my first statement here. And she stood at the door and she said, I just, uh, I must tell you, I didn't want to come. It's because of my mother that I'm here. Um, and she went on and on. Fifteen minutes later, I finally said, sit down, I have one explanation. According to your chart, your mother died giving birth. Uh, you carried such guilt because of her birth, birth that you have chosen a profession directly uh, um, uh, directed to that life and death process. In the last year, you've had to have psychiatric help. She said, yes, my mother died three weeks after I was born. I licensed. She was astounded by everything you she were was able a to tell midwife. Her. She was a midwife, which is okay. the closest you can get to life and death. And in the last year, she did have psychiatric All right. A help. comment here by Daniel. Um, I'm thinking about uh, what, what uh, medical practice and especially doctors and surgeons were like 400 years ago when astrology was the primary source of other types of knowledge of the world. And uh, we've come a long way in our medical science and we do it uh, by, by studying with other people who understand the difference between truth and false. And they, they, our universities are doing very well, turning out uh, accurate doctoring. And uh, we also have a profession, as you mentioned, of psychiatry and psychology. I think if uh, you're very sincere and you would like to understand what our culture has understood as the basis of personality and uh, mental health, you should spend the time going through the educational process and, and uh, becoming credentialed as we, uh, we insist that these other people who charge money for this type of... Uh, uh, well, uh, help. Terry, very quickly. Thank there you. are doctors and psychiatrists that I have talked to, that I deal with in my practice, that use astrology to look at a person's physical being and what is wrong with them by their astrological data. And they're very good doctors, and they're very accurate, and they've gone through the educational process. And I do, I do very much the same thing. In cases where the individual will not disclose what is going on, what is hidden, what is behind the scenes, I essentially have looked at the pattern and have said, in one case it was incest, in another case it was something else, and it, it was a diagram very much in the chart, mm -hmm. which helped them 
to really in, in, in guide and instruct that individual to a better lifestyle. We're looking exactly. at... It's uh, certainly a very busy time right now for an awful lot of people, you know, getting your tax information together and things like that. When are you like going to do that, by the way, dear? Come to think of it, we've been talking about that doing uh, that totally for three weeks let's not, let's not get into that. <laughs> but it is a busy time, and it's especially a busy one for people in the business of making predictions. And here to give us their outlook for 1986, we have three very interesting people. First of all, please welcome psychic Barbara Musalam, psychic Patricia Ruffel, and astrologer Pat Brown. I, I polled the audience earlier on and asked how many people believe in psychic mm. abilities and astrology, and I think about three quarters of the audience do believe, but we have one quarter who's kind of, mm, I don't know. But the first thing I want to know from each of you, and let's start with Barbara, it, very briefly, how did you get into the whole psychic realm and develop your ability and figure that you had some sort of ability? Now, you're an astrologer, so yeah. we're talking about something other than a psychic ability, aren't we? Well, yes, but it's a combination. I think we all have a little bit of a psychic ability. Some have more than others. Yeah. But uh, what I do, essentially, is deal with measurement of time. And measurement of time along with the psychic, which is whenever we're dealing with uh, any major problem or issue, we look at it mentally, we apply logic, uh, we, we look at the facts and then we apply a little bit of intuition to determine what we want to do with it. And essentially I think this is how I deal with astrology is the measurement of time and I look at the pattern but then um, a little bit with that psychic mm. I interpret okay. that pattern. When we come back we'll take a look at some of the things that are happening in our own studio audience here and get some predictions both astrologically and psychically. <laughs> So it's Pat Brown's turn to do some astrological readings, and we pre-selected a couple of people so that you could look up their charts, and we got Tara. Would you stand up for me? Sure. And you're going October 16th, isn't that right? That's right. Tara, you're a Libra, mm -hmm. and Libra is really the sign of unity and peace and harmony. And right now, all the air signs, Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini, are experiencing a very, very fortunate time because the planet of luck is in Aquarius. And it's a very, it, it, Aquarius, all the air signs are mental, and it's what I think. The, uh, as I said, Libras need harmony, but they also need relationships. This is very, very important to you. You're very psychic, you're very intuitive, you're very disciplined, uh, you have great integrity. When you promise something, you're very committed to it. You, um, however, change throws you a little bit off balance. And 72 to 75 was a very, very difficult time for you. Uprooting, uh, extreme, uh, either losses or, um, anyway, uh, extremely emotional. And you had to really balance out that time of your life. Uh, but what you had to learn to that is what relationships really meant and to really look to yourself for essentially the hero within. There's a hero within all of us, and, and when we're tested, we go through these obstacles, this is essentially what we find, and you have to learn to rely on yourself at that time. Sure. But it's a turnaround, 180 degrees from there now. Does this sound like you? Sure does. What about the 72 to 75 part? Very Definitely. Very really? Yeah. <laughs> right on, huh? Oh, what did you learn from that? I'm growing up. But, <laughs> it, but aren't you, we all, no. you know? But did you learn to really rely on yourself and that essentially? Very much so. Yeah. A whole lot more confidence, self-confidence, mm -hmm. going well, out and approaching the world. I'm not afraid to look people in the eye and talk to them. This is a wonderful time to gain favor and recognition from others and to gain their support for any major project that you have in mind. It's a mm -hmm. delightful Terrific. time for you right Good. now. Terrific. Good. Just started a new business. Oh, oh great. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Well, that works Thank out. You. Okay. you tell people what they, what you think they want to hear or do you tell them what you actually think? I work. This is hope and they're looking for that. But I find most of the clients that come to me are very, very open, looking for a direction, and have a good understanding about themselves. But sometimes we need to really bounce off of other people. But astrology will show essentially cycles and events that have occur occurred in a life. For instance, the one girl that I did who was a Libra, mm -hmm. knowing had, had we discussed this you know, a long time ago, before she had to uh, deal with that cycle, it would have been just a little bit easier for her knowing that this was the kind of situation and circumstances that were coming up. And this is where it does help.
We're back here on Public Report, and if you've wondered how uh, individuals arrive at the astrological projections, I think we'll find some of that information out and more. My guest is Pat Brown from San Francisco. Pat, welcome here to Public oh, Report. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, yeah. Pat, you author this column, uh, page, in fact, it's called uh, Starstruck. Yes. Okay, when you make these kinds of, uh, say, projections, how can they be accurate for, for every individual? That's a very good question, because first of all, I, if you notice, if you've read this, that I don't really do predictions. I generally deal with the, um, with the sun sign, which represents one-tenth of the energy. But it does uh, represent what one is feeling deep within, and essentially the kind of, of, of quality that has to be released in this lifetime. That's what the sun sign is representing. And so I'm talking to that sun sign. For instance, when I'm, I'm talking to your Libra, and uh, when I'm uh, talking to the Libra energy in the month of August, it is really saying something to what you are feeling deep within and what you must release and the manner and way in which you must uh, express who you are and what you are. Now, yeah. I think some people try to play God. Okay. And I think that's very wrong. Okay. I just think that's false prophecy. But are there any canons by which uh, astrologers are, are governed? I mean, a, a code of ethics. Uh, the American Federation of Astrologers does have a very strong um, requirement for uh, being able to be licensed by the FA. And really, to, to pass those tests, you, you have to be extremely knowledgeable. That would be one on its own. Okay. The other would be the kind of clientele that you've built up and the kind of things that people are saying about you. There are specific people in my area that I'm hearing very unpleasant things about and dealing with predictions, dealing with uh, abuse of power and misuse. And it, that follows you. It follows you wherever you go. It's a slower process. Right. It's a much slower process to, uh, well, to, to say, do the kind of thing that I'm doing because it's not as sensational. But in the end, it, it, it's proven, and there aren't people who can tear it apart because um, you've, you've treaded very carefully okay. and built a very solid foundation. Your, your reaction or your comments on the, the matter of, as I talked about the social setting, you know, where um, the average uh, male, if he's making, uh, trying to develop that line so many times, it's what's your sign? Mm -hmm. uh, how important a role does your um, birth signs play? I mean, oftentimes they say, well, a Libra and, and this other sign is not, aren't compatible, but... All right, let's say that um, you are a Libra and you have what is considered an ease pattern in the chart, meaning the planets by their calculations are very harmonious. They work okay. together very, very nicely, okay. as your chart is, because I remember talking with you briefly about it. Um, then there is an ease factor. You're, you're the type of person who's very adaptable. You can move in and out of situations, and uh, you have marvelous skills and talents at your disposal. But let's then, let's use the example of another Libra who has many squares, meaning planets that are 90 degrees okay. uh, uh, apart from each other, or 180, which is opposing factors. Well, this is an individual who comes into a room, and right away, is, he's blocked, he's restrained, he's restricted. And so the natural flow of the Libra energy is not being released. And also, if his moon is in a position where it does it shows very heavy blocks to the personality. He, number one, has a restricted pattern, but he also has a restricted personality, and he's relating to life uh, out of dogma and limitation. Okay, may I interrupt? So. Right? To redirect the question in a sense. Okay. So there's no such thing, then, as incompatible signs? I mean, signs that, if, that just basically... Uh, no. If, if uh, let's say that you are, as I said, the first, which does really apply to yours, mm -hmm. you should be able to interact with most... Uh, um, signs. Mm -hmm. However, there are signs that are easier for you. Mm -hmm. There are uh, the air signs. You would understand them a little bit more. You would uh, probably be able to interact with them a little bit easier because they deal with the mind. Uh, Aries, Gemini, and Libra all deal with the mind, and they're, uh, they are working from the intellect. Whereas water signs 
Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio are dealing with instinctual feeling and it's, it's how they relate to their environment, what they uh, feel is going on around and about them and how, where their comfort zone is and then how they're going to express what they're feeling. Sounds like a science. <laughs> it is a science, you know, okay. fire signs are action signs. Okay. You, you had a brief moment with uh, my associate producer Sharon Walker mm -hmm. and from the information um, that she gave you, what can you glean from that? All right, uh, I didn't have my infirmaries with me okay. and the, the infirmaries the infirmaries uh, is the mathematical calculation of the position of every planet daily so I was not able to see the Sun moon Venus and Mercury Venus would be love Mercury is the way she would communicate the moon is her personality uh, primarily those and Mars physical uh, interaction but I, I did know where the other slow moving planets were that's just from memory and uh, from that information, let's say six planets, I was able to put together that she is an individual who is uh, very self-sacrificing. She has very strong family obligations and has taken on heavy duties and workload in that area. She's extremely caring and sensitive and very motherly, mothering. She wants to nourish everybody. She wants to make others very comfortable. And uh, She's now in a position in her life where she's saying, who can help me? Uh, who can help me glue certain parts of my life together and help me to get it on a better foundation? And <laughs> who has a proven track record? And sure. where can I get that kind of assistance? Okay. Well, we'll have to check with Sharon and see how, how close All right, that yeah. Okay. When we talk about back to your publication here in this magazine, what's, what's the distribution? If you were to give a guesstimate of the distribution of the magazine, its circulation of sorts? I think it's around 75,000 right now. Okay. Now, San Francisco Magazine is in major cities uh, with the idea that uh, tourists definitely, especially airports, okay. most of the major it's airports. It's going to be available here in Las Vegas? Or yes. It's at the airport, I believe, and uh, probably major hotels. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, I, and I'm not sure of the information, but there was a, a, some information in the packet that I received relative to your uh, assistance being lent to a USFL football team. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, last year, their first year, I gave a prediction as to where the USFL football team would go because it was a year for sports. It was a year for expansion in sports. It was vital. Uh, it was energy. It was physical. And they, they couldn't have picked a better time to start, and you saw how they really came off. Yeah. Now, this year they're dealing a little bit with difficulties in administration, because this year we really are dealing with quality and value. You can see how the Olympic is, is, is yeah. taking off, yeah. Yeah. because uh, we're striving for the best that there is, and it is the best of what we are. And every individual is looking at that. If they're uh, if they're in an apartment, they're trying to better their living conditions. If they're in a home, they're, they're trying to upgrade uh, the, the, their environment. The nature uh, of the times? It's the nature of the times. Uh, businesses are really trying to, uh, uh, their administrative okay. faculties. And Here in Las Vegas, I can't help but think that in my viewing audience, individuals say, wow, I wonder if she could tell who's a good gambler who has that kind of characteristic. It, I mean, that's, you've made frequent trips here. Is that something that you right, often call that's on That's very interesting. A, I think that, again, remember, I don't know if I said this on camera or off camera, that there are astrologers who go into specific fields. Right, yeah. There are other, some who go into health and others to go, who go into the psychological pattern, which is primarily what I deal with. And then there are others who deal with love, and then some with gambling, and they have been quite successful with it. Um, I can see an individual's lucky time, and I can tell them the kind of energy that prevails. In other words, maybe they have the type of energy that says, move on quickly. If you're winning here, as long as that's going for you, stay with it. But the minute that starts to turn, move from it. Go on to something else, because maybe that's the energy that's applying. Uh, others have to uh, instinctively um, determine how comfortable they are with what they are. D do I feel like I'm in a winning streak or does this feel cold? Mm -hmm. And then they have to move on for that. Feelings play an important role in that whole scenario? Then. Energy, well, 
even with gambling, mm -hmm. energy does really apply. For instance, if you look at anyone who's won $100,000, you can look in their chart and you'll see a winning streak. You'll see where luck is really, really applying. Uh, I've watched certain individuals and, and I have seen that okay. at a certain hour in the day. We're out of time. It seems like time oh. goes so fast. It's talking to oh. you. Quite interesting. Oh, we're very glad you can make the trek down from San Francisco and wish you the very best. And uh, we'll try to keep up with the San Francisco magazine oh, here so that you. we can follow you. Thank you. It's, this has been lovely. And your questions are excellent. Thank you for being here. You're an excellent right. guest. Thank you. Thank okay. you.